come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, they, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Eric Wilson. And today, we're going to be talking about Patrick Nemeth and what the Rangers should do with him this offseason now. Patrick Nemeth is a player that underperformed in 2021. Uh, he was signed last July to a three-year deal, but unfortunately, it doesn't appear like that was the best signing by the Rangers, and it seems extremely unlikely that he plays out that three-year contract. So we're going to discuss what the Rangers should do with Patrick Nemeth this offseason um, and kind of just talk about what they can do with potentially some salary cap savings that they would get if they decide to move on from Patrick Nemeth this offseason. So Eric, how are you doing today, and what are your thoughts on Patrick Nemeth and the potential of maybe moving on to free up some salary cap space? Uh, you know, I'm doing good, Tone. Um, when it comes to Patrick Nemeth, um, obviously I'm not a I'm not a big fan of him. You know, we signed him. He was meant to be a veteran presence on our team to help our young defensive core out. But, you know, as the season went along, we kind of learned that our young defensive core really didn't need that veteran presence, you know. You have guys like Adam Fox, Ryan Linger, and Jacob Truba, who are really just helping the young guys out, like Braden Schneider. And honestly, Nemeth kind of just brought us down. You know, he didn't play the full season. Uh, he lacked defensively, offensively. He took dumb penalties when he shouldn't have. And honestly, I'm ready to see him go. Um, it's kind of like the same thing a couple seasons ago with Jack Johnson. We had him on our team, supposed to be the veteran presence didn't work out, you know, it kind of just seems like we got to stick with our younger guys here and maybe just move on from signing these older uh, defensive defensemen and just work with what we have. Yeah, and the Rangers did sign Patrick Nemeth to a three-year $7.5 million deal last July, so that's $2.5 million average annual value, of course, um, and he definitely didn't play up to that salary. His performance did not match the amount of money that he was being paid. He did play in 63 games in the 2021 season. He totaled only seven points, but he had a plus minus of negative nine, minus nine. And I think that's really interesting to note because also in the playoffs, he played in five games and he posted negative five, minus five in the plus minus. So when you take a look at that, it basically tells you that the Rangers are worse off whenever Patrick Nemeth is on the ice. They're literally just a worse team when he's on the ice. So <laughs> that kind of just tells you enough right there. He's He lacks efficiency. He lacks production. Again, only seven points in 63 games. And the Rangers letting in way more goals than they're scoring whenever he is on the ice. So he's just not getting the job done from a defensive perspective. And, you know, we've talked about this for the past few weeks since we started this podcast about Igor Shosturkin being the world class goalie. He should win an award for his uh, goalie uh, goalkeeping. But we'll talk about that probably tomorrow. But when you're talking about Igor Shosturkin, it can't be all Igor Shosturkin. He needs his help. And especially during the playoffs, he did need more help. The defense was lacking at times for the Rangers. And Patrick Nemeth barely even played in the playoffs. But, you know, talking about even his regular season performance, he was not playing up to par. The Rangers were letting in more goals when he was on the ice. He wasn't doing his job in, in terms of blocking shots and, you know, playing good defense, really, at the end of the day. So we're talking about Patrick Nemeth. I think the obvious scenario here this offseason for the Rangers is that they are going to move on but the question is how will they move on they can either buy him out of his contract or they can attempt to trade him to another team now both of those scenarios can play out in two different ways and in fact they can play out in a multitude of ways if you really break it down but I'll go ahead and discuss the salary cap hits and the salary cap savings of both of those scenarios right now so if they were to buy him out uh, this offseason, they would endure a cap hit of $1 million, meaning that they would free up $1.5 million in cap space this offseason. And they would also free up all of the contract next season. So that's uh, $2.5 million in cap savings in 2023 and a $0 penalty than the following season. So they could also do a couple different things. They could trade him. Um, trade 50% of his contract away so they could free up $1.25 million, half of the salary this offseason, and $1.25 million, half of the salary next offseason. So they're basically cutting the cost in half if they trade him for 50%, or they can trade away and keep 25%. Um, they would only free up six point or they would free up actually a lot more they would uh have a cap hit of six hundred and twenty five thousand. so they do have some options here 
But Eric, I want to know what's your take on it. Would you rather they buy him out, you know, and they get the uh, cap space right now? They get 1.5 million this offseason, 2.5 million next offseason. But it also, there is a penalty in 2024 and 2025 of a million dollars in uh, dead cap for both of those seasons. So would you rather that or would you rather try to trade him, free up half of the salary, and maybe, you know, get a uh, draft pick in return? Yeah, I mean, personally, looking at the way that the team is structured right now, I would say that trading him away would be our best option. You know, even if you tried to just trade Nemeth away and also give away a draft pick just to retain as little salary as possible, just to open up more cap space for us and just get rid of this player that we have who's bringing us down. Because, you know, right now we're in the, the, we're in the win now uh, mode. Um, we just made the conference finals and we're hoping to be a powerhouse in the Eastern conference throughout the next three to four years. So if we, we don't need draft picks currently, we're at the best that we can be. We kind of just got to wait for our players to develop. I would say, get rid of him, maybe get rid of like a second round pick, maybe a third, uh, just to get rid of his contract because then it'll leave us with more room to resign our younger guys in the future when they get off of their entry level contracts. Um, if that doesn't work out, worst case scenario, we do buy them out and, you know, we save a little bit of cap for a few seasons, but then later down the line, three or four or five years from now, that's when we get really cap strapped. And then we have all these young guys coming off of their entry level contracts and we have to resign them. And then we're in a similar position that we're into now where we have all these guys who are becoming free agents and we're like, oh, we only have $10 million in cap space that we got to work with. So I would say. If we could pull off a trade to get rid of his most of his contract, at least, I would say go for it. But if that doesn't work out, just buy him out, work with what we got, work with what we got now, and then just hopefully try to win the cup within the next two to three years before it comes back to bite us. Yeah, and kind of just talking to the point that you made, if they were to buy him out, yeah, they'll free $1.5 million this year, they'll free $2.5 million next year, but what you're referring to is the $1 million penalties in 2024 and 2025, uh, actually from 2024 to 2026 is what they're going to endure, a million dollars per year, so that of course is falling in line with what you're saying, we've got some young guys who 2025 and 26 off seasons might be ready for some new contracts. And then you're talking about, well, okay, now the Rangers don't exactly have that much money to spend because, you know, they're tied up with a million dollars in dead cap to uh, Patrick Nemeth from two years ago. But if you trade him, there's no penalties 2024 to 25 or 2025 to 2026. They can get all of his money off of the books within the next two years and be more financially flexible in the following two years. So this is really a four-year plan with the Patrick Nemeth contract. A little bit of a hole that the Rangers have dug themselves in with this one. So it's kind of, would you rather get the money right now, get the money immediately within the next two years, or make sure that the Rangers have as much money as possible over the next four years. Now, personally, Eric, you kind of want to see the Rangers trade him, free up half of the contract this year, half of the contract next year, or maybe 65 or 75% of the contract both of those years, which could be a very viable option. And then you're not paying any fees, you know, in 2024 to five or 25 to 26. But personally, I'm really enticed by the full $2.5 million being freed up next offseason. And I think that's kind of where I'm leaning. So I'm thinking that if the Rangers do go with the buyout option instead, they'll free $1.5 million this offseason. They could probably invest that back into a Vetrano contract, maybe a Capococco, or maybe even go after a backup goalie here with that $1.5 million. And then a $2.5 million next offseason, again, just investing that back into the team. I think that would be really important. So I'm kind of curious to see though let's say that the rangers do go ahead and they buy him out and they free up 1.5 million dollars this offseason what do you think they should do with that amount of money well i think it goes back to the previous episodes that we've made on this podcast um you know we're deep in the hunt for a solid second line center obviously ryan strom has failed us all as rangers fans you know we need someone new to step in right there uh maybe Andrew Kopp or a bigger free agent that's out there. You know, there's guys like JT Miller or um, Johnny Goudreau, you know, anyone out there, any sec second line center that can really just come in and fill that spot, I think is our biggest need this off season. Um, you know, we can obviously go for some other defensive depth or maybe even like another solid winger to add to our team or even a backup goaltender. 
you know, there's a lot of holes that we have on our team that held us back from making the finals this year. Um, I think this off season is extremely crucial for the future of our franchise. We can either regress and go back to the team that we were the last three to four years, or we can push even farther and become a better team. So obviously having money is a huge thing. We need to sign these big, big name players and really just improve our team. The number one thing I would say though, second line center, Strom, Cop, anyone else, that's where we need our money. And I would take as much money as we can to get Patrick Nemeth out of our lineup as quickly as possible. Yeah, and technically the way to get the most money right now to invest in that second line center would be trading away Patrick Nemeth. But of course, you have to find a team willing to take on that salary. And they're going to have to take on $2.5 million this year, $2.5 million in the next, unless, you know, there's some type of terms negotiated, which there likely would be. Um, And there's two ways that that could happen. The Rangers could trade with 50% of the salary retained, meaning that they free up $1.25 million and the team takes on $1.25 million. Or they could trade with 25% retained, where the Rangers free up $1.875 million. Now, here's the thing. In order to trade Patrick Nemeth due to the size of his contract, the Rangers are going to have to add draft capital probably in that trade. And they could potentially be adding two second round picks. So not only are they trading away Patrick Nemeth, but they're also probably trading away two second round picks just to free up, what is it, $1.25 or $1.875 million in cap space in this and next offseason. So that's kind of where, you know, how much are you willing to sacrifice for the salary cap savings, Eric? You know, how many draft picks are you willing to give up? How high of draft picks are you willing to give up? Because, you know, again, talking about maybe giving up two second round picks just to free up around under $2 million in cap space versus giving up no picks, freeing up a full $2.5 million next offseason. It's kind of like risk reward. Which one do you prefer? And how valuable are those draft picks to you, Eric? So what are you willing to give up in this trade just to get Patrick Nemeth's salary off of the books? You see, it's a tough call for me because, you know, obviously we need to always be mindful of our future. We have a very good team right now um, who has the potential to win. However, you know, like five, six years down the line, when our core that we have gets older, um, we need to be able to feel comfortable with the future that we have and these prospects and the draft picks. But honestly, I, like if I'm being completely honest right now in this moment, I'm willing to give up whatever we need to give up in order to win the cup. You look at like recent years, it's what the Tampa Bay lightning did. They had a lot of young players and draft picks and they traded them all away for a very solid core that won back-to-back cups and are currently playing in their third straight Stanley cup. And they're a little screwed for the future. I'm not going to lie. Once this core that they have gets older and retires or gets traded away, they're not really going to have much to work with. But that's kind of the mindset that I'm in right now. I'm willing to just trade away everything that we have prospects and picks wise in order to create a super team like the Lightning have. So maybe we could win a cup or two, maybe even three straight. You know, who knows what's going to happen in the future? And then when we get to the future, that's when we just start another rebuild. It's like what happened with the Rangers just a couple of years ago. You know, we had an older team, not that much of a future, and we traded away all of our older guys for draft picks and younger prospects. And we created like one of the youngest and quickest rebuilds that has ever happened in the NHL. We know two seasons and we went from an old veteran team who was drawn out, lost in the playoffs five years straight to the youngest most prosperous team out there prosperous sorry english um but yeah that's my point i'm willing to give away whatever i need to give away in order to just create a super team that can win the stanley cup yeah i mean that's totally viable as an option and totally an understandable point but another point that i will make sort of a counterpoint is if they do go ahead and buy out um the contract the 2.5 million back on the books meaning you know, salary cap space that the Rangers have to spend next offseason. That's just in time for Alexis Lafreniere, uh, Keandre Miller, and Philip Hedel. They'll be in line to get new contracts next offseason. So that's $2.5 million. So I guess the $1.5 million this offseason is very valuable. And But the $2.5 million next offseason is far more valuable, in my opinion, just because of mm-hmm. who's about to be an unrestricted free agent next offseason. So... 
I think that's why I'm leaning towards the buyout. You get that 2.5 million, so that way you can invest it back in the talent with the expiring contracts in the next offseason. And that's really kind of why I'm leaning towards the buyout personally. But uh, do you have any thoughts about that, Eric? Um, I mean, yeah, that's like a uh, like a very important factor to consider, um, especially because those three players that you named are extremely young. You know, it's kind of tough to see where they're going to pan out throughout their careers. Obviously, Lafreniere is voted uh, drafted first overall. Um, he has a lot of potential. Kendra Miller played phenomenal throughout this season and the playoffs. And who is it there that you said? Heedle. Heedle, obviously, yes. Heedle has been like a little rough throughout the regular season. But in the playoffs, he played amazing. So, you know, you have these three young players. Um, and it's like, it's a little bit confusing, you know, next season, um, on their last year of their contracts, they can just go back to being average players, you know, worth one or 2 million, maybe even three, or they can have breakout seasons. All three of them have a very high chance of having breakout seasons. And then coming off of that, they could demand a lot of money. So, you know, it's kind of like, you got to take that risk. It's like, do you want to have that extra cap space just in case they have breakout seasons and need more money to sign them? Or do you just take the safe bet and say that there's going to be 30, 40 point scores throughout the regular season and keep the money that you have, you know? So it's like 50, 50, like I said, you know, on where, where they're going to stand by the end of the season. So whatever, whatever we do, whether it be trade him away or buy him out, I think it's both a win loss situation in either way, you know, there's really no win win situation when it comes to Patrick Nemeth. You know, we signed him for to a contract that was way too much money for way too many years for a veteran defenseman, and it backfired on us, which is just, you know, typical Rangers things, as we've all seen throughout the years as Rangers fans. But <clears throat> if we make the right calls here, I trust in Chris Drury as our general manager. I think he'll make the right decision, and hopefully we'll be able to save as much money as possible and re-sign all the guys that we need to within the coming years. For sure, and I think what you said there, kind of it – being a win-lose situation no matter what it really is kind of one of those situations you just have a lot of pros and you have a lot of cons you just have to evaluate the pros and the cons see which pros are more valuable to you see which cons are you know more manageable to you and that's really what the rangers are going to be doing so it's going to be interesting to see exactly how they manage this patrick nemeth contract again he's very likely on the way out it's almost a guarantee at this point they're going to free up some salary cap space it's just are they going to trade him or are they going to buy him out? And th again, we mentioned a lot of pros and cons to buying him out, spending the money on the uh, in-house talent next off season, and then trading him. You kind of have more flexibility in the long run. So, Pros and cons for both, but we're excited to hear down below in the comment section from all of you listening, what do you think the Rangers should do? Buy out, trade, um, what should they do with the money that they get? Just let us know your thoughts on this topic down below in the comment section. Of course, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss a video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Make sure to subscribe, though, for sure, because once this happens, once Patrick Nemeth is traded or bought out, we're going to be covering it right here on Fireside Rangers, giving you the updates throughout the offseason, and we can't wait to do so so like i said make sure to subscribe if you're new ring the bell so you don't miss a video and we'll catch you on the next one have a good one and let's go rangers go rangers he shoots he scores he scores rangers rangers rangers